Hey guys, I'm Dr. Aaron Horshig, and today we're gonna to talk about how you can continue to lift with a disc bulge in your back. Get up and get down, get up and get down. All right guys, so a disc bulge is one of the most common injuries that occurs at the low back. And today we're gonna to talk about how that relates to lifting, what exactly is going on at your spine, what you need to do to prevent it from continuing to be a problem, and how you can continue lifting whenever you've had one like this. So let's first start talking about how a disc bulge occurs. Now, here's a model from Dynamic Disc Designs. And what this does is it's going to show the exact mechanism of a disc bulge. Now, you can see when we flip it over, you can see See there's a red line through that outer portion of the disc. Now that is mimicking a break in the collagen of the disc. Basically the inner nucleus has wedged its way through to the back. Now how does that occur? When you combine a couple things, flexion, so the disc moving this way, and compression, let's do that right now. So we're going to mimic flexion and compression. You can see that the disc bulges out the back, that little bit of gel. You can see right there. Now, whenever you have straight compression on the spine, straight down, load is evenly distributed across the entire disc. Notice how if I put and drive the thrust line straight down, no disc bulge occurs. There's no herniation out the back. However, if you have repeated flexion with load, the lumbar spine eventually, that is the mechanism that eventually drives a disc bulge to occur. Now here's the deal, many people have disc bulges, some are very painful, some don't cause any pain at all. If you took an MRI of 1,030 year olds, usually around 30% of them are gonna have a disc bulge in their back and currently don't have pain. And why is that? One reason is that disc bulges eventually are going to heal on their own. You're not necessarily gonna have a disc bulge that's creating pain for the rest of your life. However, here's what happens, is that whenever you have a disc bulge, instantly the stability of the disc is actually going to be limited, the stiffness of that disc. Here's an, uh, another model from Dynamic Disc Designs. And what this is showing is a stable or stiff joint at L3, and L5, but L4 has lost some of its stiffness due to possibly a disc bulge in the past or an end plate fracture for, th for some reason. If I create a little bit of rotation, you can see that L4 that has lost some stiffness is moving more so than the other joints. When you have a disc bulge, it instantly loses and decreases some of the stiffness at that joint. And whenever the joint is then loaded, it's going to not equally distribute force across the entire disc, but instead is going to shift a lot of force to the posterior part, posterior elements of the spine called the facet joints. Now let's talk about this. If you have a load that goes straight down through the spine and you have good stability and the entire spine moves together, let's say you're doing a deadlift, you are going to cut down on any problems in handling shear and compressive forces. But let's say that you have had a disc bulge in the past and you haven't gone through rehab correctly and you haven't uh, ingrained a lot of stability back into your spine. What happens is that that lack of stiffness at that joint is going to force excessive pressure to the back part of the spine, the facet joints. Now, you can see right here, this model from Dynamic Disc Designs has been able to mimic what happens when eventually you're going to overuse those facet joints because of the excessive force that's been placed on them. So whenever you have some rotation or some shear force, you can notice how the facet joint cartilage has been worn away right there compared to the other ones because of the change in dynamic in which the joint at L4, because it's lost stiffness, has affected then the movement of the entire spine. Now, what does this mean? Let's say we work on improving stiffness of the entire joint itself, or the entire lumbar spine. We improve lumbar stability. When that happens, we limit the amount of force that is transferred to the posterior element. So instead of going over into a deadlift where there's a lot of anterior shear force that is going to place excessive load and micro movements at those facet joints, the entire joint is now going to be stabilized and you're not going to get excessive forces placed on that area. So that can help learn or to basically keep your back resilient to future injury. 
So the big thing I wanna show you guys is that when you have a disc bulge, it is not the end of the world. But once you have one, you then need to rehab your back correctly and improve the stability of those joints because when you have a disc bulge, you're going to inherently lose a little bit of stiffness at that specific joint. And what that's going to lead to is micro movements that then transfer force when your body is subjected to shear and compressive forces, it's going to shift force to the facet joints in the back. And if you do not have the correct stability and stiffness in your spine, it's going to allow those micro movements to eventually wear away other parts of the back. This is called the cascade of problems. And even though there's no more pain at the disc because that pain has efficiently burned out, the problem is still there. And eventually this could create pain just in another area of your body because you've worn out that cartilage at the facet joint. So this would be a different type of pain, but all due to the original problem with the disc bulge that then created a cascade of problems, which led to the facet joint pain because you didn't learn stability. So let's talk about what that would mean when we get to the gym. Whenever you're lifting weights, you then want to work on proper bracing of the core and then moving about the hips. Whether you're doing a deadlift or whether you're doing a squat, making sure that you're not getting that butt wink, excessive movement here. Whenever you go down and you sufficiently brace your core and move everything about the hips, you're stiffening those segments that at times could allow for micro movements that are creating that pain eventually or the wearing away the cartilage. By sufficiently stabilizing, stiffening, creating sufficient tension at the spine and then moving about the hips, you limit that unwanted motion at the spinal joints that could eventually lead to more injury in the future. So I hope that um, model and demonstration was able to give you a better understanding of how in the future you can still lift with the disc bulge. The bulge itself may have still been there but it's not necessarily going to limit your ability to continue lifting if you learn proper stability and how to stabilize that joint and move about the hips. That's how you can still lift with a disc bulge. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like, comment, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, and until next week, guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos, these people